can we actually prove this the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection why why not something else so if you were to be curious enough to ask that question then let's see what we can do it's a very beautiful thing let's start with a story let's say there's a pole here and there's another pole here a taller one and let's say there's a crow sitting on this one and there's a mouse running between these two poles continuously right and the crow's nest is on the other pole now what does the crow want to do it wants to take this mouse and carry it to its nest and the crow crow flies in straight lines so you might be beginning to guess what what we're getting to with this and the crow wants to do it as quickly as possible let us say so we have a very simple situation here so then the question is where must the crow catch the mouse should it catch it when it's right close to that pole very close to this pole when it's right in the middle where exactly how do we answer such a question think about it now if you were to imagine the second pole and reflect that second pole on that road such as it comes down you might be be wondering why we are doing this but you'll watch it in a couple of seconds then look at what happens what is the shortest part between that pole and this end of the pole now it's a straight line that connects them that's very clear because between any two points the shortest distance is a straight line now why did we do this because these two triangles now are similar which means that if that is the shortest path between these two points then the exact reflection back must be the shortest path between these two poles which is what we're trying to find because in this case the shortest path is the quickest path as well so where will it intersect where will the crow catch the mouse the part where that line intersects the road like you can see now what if these two poles are of equal height what happens watch what happens if these two poles are of equal height you reflect it and draw a line where does it pass right through the center of that road you reflect it back now what do you see these two triangles are congruent you already know what congruent triangles are which means that these two angles are going to be equal and those two angles are also going to be equal and what have we just proved that the shortest path between this point and that point touching the mirror is going to be the point such that it hits the center of that mirror right why am i talking about mirror all of a sudden because right now our story was a crow taking a mouse and carrying it to the other pole right now when we do that we realize that if the crow was light then what does it become light also wants to take the quickest path so light will go through the center and reach the other side if this was a, a mirror of course the shortest path to take in general would be the straight line connecting them but we're talking about the ray of light that gets reflected so the question is the ray that has to touch the mirror and still go there and then which will be the quickest path and what is it we just proved it's the center point and by proving that what have we proved the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection and we have not told it as a law but we have told that does light want the angle of incidence to be equal to the angle of reflection not really all that light is trying to do is to make it so that it takes the quickest path and it so happens that that quickest path is such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so if you notice something till now we proved already that rectilinear propagation of light or that light travels in straight lines can be proved using just one assumption lights in a hurry and angle of incidence equals angle of reflection can also be proved using the same thing lights in a hurry light wants to take the quickest path between any two points now we have told it in a very general manner or a very funny manner as lights in a hurry there's a name for this it's called fermat's principle of least time in other words fermat's principle fermat stated that between two points light will always take the quickest path and that's called fermat's principle of least time and that is going to be our focus because with that one statement we're going to prove everything that we can do in this entire chapter called ray optics 